just now. like the right side of the church is the popular side today. <laughs> Congratulations to you brave individuals who decided to sit on the left, even though it might be scary. Uh, you get today's award. I'll have to talk. I'll have to figure out what that is later. Uh, welcome to the service again, everybody. It's so good to see you. I, I wanted to um, just begin here. Sorry getting started a couple minutes late, as you can tell, our, our worship band, <clears throat> I, I just, you know, was practicing, and I'll talk to them later about getting done early. And the bell ring. And the, did the bell ring? Yeah, I did it. Oh, great job, Rosa. Rosa rang the bell today. Nice job. So, just to get started here, a couple of announcements. Of course, today is graduation Sunday. I know both Colm and Edgley are having their graduation ceremonies this afternoon, so uh, just keep that in mind if you're if you're planning to, to go and celebrate those. We have three in our church who are graduating today, so that is very exciting. Um, coming up here right away this week, Community DBS at the Church of the Living Word with Darcy Reddy. Um, you can read the details there. If you have children or grandchildren uh, that would be interested in attending, please um, take some time to to, to look into that um, yourself, registration is not required, but would be helpful um, so they can plan a little bit around uh, the numbers of kids who might be there. A couple other things here, offering plate uh, will continue to not be passed here for at least for this week. Um, and on that note, I just wanted to mention last week I said that, um, you know, officially we haven't changed mask mandates here, but at the same time we, we do know that the church is... is um, Trying has, has been for the last year trying to do things uh, in accordance with CDC guidelines. And now that those CDC guidelines are changing, I imagine things will be changing here at the church. However, I did talk to the council. They're going to meet this week to make that sort of change. So stay tuned on Facebook. Stay tuned on, on whatever we're coming and starting next week. Um, if, if things were to change in that regard, that we'll, we'll try to make that announcement as soon as we know. Okay? But thank you again for just your patience on that. Uh, also, uh, one thing that's not included in the in the announcements, uh, Lori mentioned to me, it's it's the time of year when we change the service time. So 
Um, that will probably also be confirmed for sure this week, but it usually starts in our first June service. So uh, whatever week in June, whatever day in June, it will be two weeks from today. So just keep that in mind. Uh, sixth. Okay. June 6th. As a likely change to the 9 o'clock service. Okay? Um, prayer concerns, we've had a number that we, we continue to pray for. There, We haven't had any new ones added this week, I don't think. Have we, Sarah? I don't think know? so. Um, and really no updates as of yet but uh, on any of these. But we, we do continue to pray for, for many of those who've been um, battling long-term health issues, whether that be cancer or chronic illnesses, um, or or COVID. And so um, please keep keep all of these individuals in your prayer and just take some time to, to look through those and, and do that. Uh, were there any though prayer requests to add here today, this morning, uh, at this time, or announcements for that matter? No? Okay. Well, I'll add a praise, um, a celebration for the rain that we've received. I, I, it looked like there was some Good rain here this morning when I drove in. Um, uh, yeah, so praise God for that. Lord knows we need all the rain that we can get at this point. So <clears throat> just a praise. And if there's nothing else, uh, we'll get started. Uh, please stand for the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on page 56. Today is the first Sunday of Pentecost, so things have changed a little bit. I, I had a, a Lutheran friend of mine text me yesterday and said, tomorrow's the first day of Pentecost, you need to wear your red. And I said, well, you're a better Lutheran than I am, because I didn't even know that. But then I look here, and, and, I, and I look at the flowers, and it all makes perfect sense now. So, um, even your pastor of 10 years learns new things about the church calendar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our opening hymn today. Holy, holy, holy. Uh, before we start, though, I just want to ask, who is responsible for these beautiful flowers? Don't hesitate to raise your hand. Ah, I figured. Kathy. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. All right, holy, 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 page 165. <laughs> Thank you. 
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Um, our hymn of praise, you may be seated. I'm gonna, it'll take a few minutes to get set up here. We're going to sing um, 10,000 Reasons, which is a song you're familiar with. Uh, if not, I know the kids are, and they can um, help keep the tune, right? Yes. Well, they have inserts. Yeah. You have inserts. Right, right, right. You have inserts as well. So.
Have you please stand at this time for the prayer of the day? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I will invite our reader forward for today's reading. Man goes forth to his work. And to his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan. Which you may be all of them look to you. We have to give them their food in due season. You give it to them. They gather it. You open, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they are in to their dust. 
You send forth your spirit, and they are created. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. I will rejoice in the Lord. Here ends the song. The second reading is Romans 8, 22 through 27, and that is on the back of your um, bulletin if you want to follow along. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, and God, who searches the heart, knows, that is, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Here in the reading. Rosa wore her red. Yes. I didn't even know that. <laughs> and you didn't even know. And I wore red, red, red shoes. <laughs> she gets the Pentecostal award today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, people on the left. The award was going to go to you, but no. Jeez. All right, so today it is. It's the first day of Pentecost, and we're going to talk about Pentecost. We're going to talk a little bit about this. Uh, but I want to come at it from a different direction today. Where's my... Ah, on the floor. <laughs> Let me turn this around for a sec. Okay. We got a clear? 
Can you turn that one click, please? That's the ear set? Ear set, yeah. So today I want to talk about Pentecost. I, you know, th it, was, it was really interesting. I, usually when I go through the process of preparing a sermon, I discover some new things. And um, today, or for this week, preparing here for the sermon today, I really learned something new. Uh, and I want to share that with you. I want to kind of bring you into that, 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 that experience of learning something new in in the Bible. And now that I've said that, I'll probably give my sermon and you'll all say, well, I knew that already. So if you do, don't tell me that. Just, you know, make me feel, make me feel like I've, you know, not missed out on something all these 39 years. Okay. So it is the first day of Pentecost. And now Pentecost is something that we think of in the book of Acts as the day the Spirit came, right? The, the Holy Spirit comes upon the people. Sarah read the story. Uh, they spoke in tongues. Fire came down from heaven. It was a dramatic experience. Not unlike the fire coming down upon me right here. Um, imagine that happening in reality, though. That's what the day of Pentecost is as we read it in Acts. And true, that is, in fact, what the day of Pentecost is. But there are roots to it that extend way back to the Old Testament that actually, uh, I think, bring it out more starkly, more sharply, give it more meaning. And that's what I want to share with you a little bit today. Uh, the title of the passage, the title of the message today is First Fruits. First Fruits. Now, I'm going to bring you back to the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 23 is where I'd like to, to begin here. Now, at this point in the story, uh, Israel has come through the Red Sea. The Exodus has occurred. The Ten Commandments have already been given. And there are some more things that God is sort of commanding the Israelites or sort of asking them to do. And beginning in verse 14 of chapter 23, it says this, He wants three times a year, in addition to these other things, I want you to celebrate a feast to me. It says, You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread for seven days. You are to eat unleavened bread as I commanded you. Also, verse 16, it says, You shall observe the feast of the harvest, the harvest of the first fruits of your labors. From what you sow in the field. Okay, so this is a traditional Jewish celebration. It's the harvest, or it's the celebration of feasts, is what it becomes known as. Now, for the feast of harvest, it, it has these different names. But that begins, it's, it's, a, it's acknowledged first in Exodus 23, verse 16. But then in Exodus 34, it gets a little bit... Um, it fleshed out a little bit more. Please follow me here because this will all come together. Exodus 34. And that's verse 22 here it says. We're beginning in 21. You shall work six days, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Even during plowing time and harvest you shall rest. Uh, <clears throat> You shall celebrate the feast of weeks, that is, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of the harvest at the turn of the year. Okay, now, you say to yourself, now, Jordan, what, what does this have to do with anything? Why are you telling us about the first fruits of, um, the first fruits in this, way back in the Old Testament, when it's the day of Pentecost, Right? Well, I'm going to now turn back to the New Testament. And I want us, in the light of that, in the light of that context and of that history, I want you to hear the passage from Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, beginning, beginning in the back of your, if you want to follow along in the back of your bulletin, beginning in verse 22, it says again, 
We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption and the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, but who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, and God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Paul says that we, we who have received, we who have received the first fruits of the Spirit. Um, of course, the title of my message is First Fruits, and the overlapping theme that we see here in what Paul is saying, and what is chosen as our second reading in the day of Pentecost, is Paul referring to us receiving the first fruits of the Spirit. Now, in the Old Testament, the first fruits, the, the harvest, the, the, the festival of the weeks, the festival of harvest, where the fruits, first fruits were brought, was about the people of God giving God something. Not only something, but giving God the best thing. Giving God the first thing. So it would be like for us farmers who go and harvest that we would take the first 10% or whatever of our crop. And that's what we would then give. Right? We would give at the beginning versus what tends to happen, and I, not just for farmers, but I think what happens even in our own culture is that we give at the end. Right? If we've taken care of our cell phone bill and still have money left, then we can give that. Right? Because our cell phone is certainly more important. I won't go there. <laughs> the first fruits developed, it began, it transformed the people of Israel into understanding how to trust God. And understanding that we can give the beginning away, we can give the first things away back to God because that demonstrates our trust that he will provide in the end. Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a little, uh, it's a discipline, really, a discipline of giving. And, and remarkably... One of the places in the New Testament where we see this idea of first fruits comes up is here where Paul is talking about first fruits, not that we have given God, but that God has given us the Holy Spirit, demonstrating that God has given us in Pentecost his best, the advocate. As John talks about the advocate, the one who will guide us into truth, the one who will lead us into God's ways in this world is the Holy Spirit given on Pentecost, which is the first fruits of what God is giving us in redemption. Now, so often the talk, so often conversations about the Holy Spirit can become, can can get narrowed into this sort of question of, well, what is the sign of the Spirit? What, you know, on Pentecost, on, a, on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit came and people began to speak in tongues, there is denominational uh, strife between different denominations about the Spirit and how the Spirit works and this, that, and the other. And leaving that aside, because certainly the Spirit works in different ways, 
Perhaps the most important thing that we missed along the way is recognizing the incredible, in fact, ridiculous grace that comes to us by the presence of the Spirit in our lives. No matter how that looks, no matter what that looks like, because it was God's best. It's what he gave us as a sign, as a foretaste of the kingdom of God. So then Paul says we groan inwardly. That we have a hard time. But basically what Paul is saying is we have a hard time in this life a lot of times. Creation itself is groaning for the redemption that God, the full redemption that God will one day bring. But that redemption that God has promised to fully bring one day has now been laid down with a down payment. A down payment of a first fruit that is his best, that is the very, the third person of the Trinity given to each and every one of us. You see how that flips around? First fruits is all about what we give God and all of a sudden here it's about what God gives us. That's good news. And you think to yourself, well, Jordan, um, uh, what, uh, you're stretching it here. You're stretching trying to say these kinds of things about the first fruit. Maybe just Paul just used those words, right? You might think, well, that's not what he was referring to, but if you look back in the Old Testament, I want to take you to one more passage in the Old Testament. And it's number, let's see here. In Numbers 28, 26, it says the fruit, the first fruits, it talks about that the first fruits were given at the Feast of Harvest, which was the second of three annual festivals. This feast is also known as the Feast of Weeks, or it's also known as the Feast of why? Because even in the Jewish calendar, it was normally celebrated seven weeks, seven complete weeks, or 50 days after Passover. Do you know how many weeks of Easter we just celebrated? What was last Sunday? Um, the which week of Easter? Last. <laughs> was it the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth? Which one? You see the connection? How it all connects. The seventh Sunday, the seventh week after Passover was when they celebrated giving of the first fruits to God. Now we, in the era of the New Testament, seven weeks after Easter begins, celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit, the first fruits, to God's people. What a tremendous Story. What an incredible grace we've been given. I don't want to, um, I, I simply want to conclude today with that point to remind us that the Holy Spirit is a gift of God's best given to us. This day of Pentecost. That reminds us, reminds us that even though God asks us to give his, give our first fruits to him, it reminds us to trust him because in the end, he will give his first fruits to us, which are markedly better and greater than we could ever ourselves. And so, with that, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you today for this simple message of the first fruits of the Spirit at this day of Pentecost. How it reflects and mirrors the 
experience of the Israelites thousands and thousands of years ago. But Lord, at the bottom, at the bottom, at the most basic element of the truth that comes to us in all of this is the truth that we've been talking about for the last several weeks, and that is your tremendous generosity and grace shown us. Your grace shown us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and your grace shown us by the giving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit which enables us, empowers us to live our lives to give our lives away to you and for you. Lord, I pray that by the strength of your spirit, we would do just that. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. So the chorus says, I am no longer a slave to fear, I am a child of God. That, in fact, the two can't go together. You can't be a slave to fear and be a child of God. But here's the good news, and this is from Romans 8, the same chapter where my message came from, just a couple verses up. It says there, You have not received the spirit of slavery, leading to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies. So again, day of Pentecost. The Spirit himself testifies with, with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs of Christ, if indeed we suffer with him. A lot there, Paul is saying, but again, just a reminder that what we're going to be singing here is true. It's true about each and every one of us. We are children of God.
Simon, have you please stand for the Apostles' Creed? Before I continue on anymore, I, I want to point, your, your direct, point you to the direction at the end of the service, our closing hymn. We're going to start the summer uh, uh, tradition of, of having the closing hymn be a congregational favorite. So, be thinking about that. When we get to it, I'll have, I'll have you guys uh, raise your hand and we'll hopefully, uh, well, I'm pretty sure Katrina knows, knows all of them. So, uh, whatever your favorite is, we'll, have, we'll go with that. All right, the Apostles' Creed, page 65. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we come before you today and we praise you and we, we worship you. For you are a God who is generous, a God who is gracious. We thank you, Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit today. The gift of the Holy Spirit which reminds us that we are children of yours. A gift that reminds us that we, know we are no longer slaves to fear, but that we are adopted as sons and daughters of the living God. Lord, we pray for your whole church, asking that in the light of that truth, your church would be a gift to the world. A gift of what it means to, a gift that reflects what it means to know the Creator, to be loved by, adopted by God Himself. May that overflow with a generosity and a kindness patience, and grace to the world around. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations today, we pray. We continue to pray for peace in the Middle East, in the Gaza, Israel area. Lord, the issues there are complicated and go back so many thousands of years to times where we even speak about here in church. Lord, the conflict seems so unnecessary. I pray that you would bring peace. I pray that you would bring healing to that part of the world. Lord, we pray for continued distribution of vaccines to many nations throughout the world who are, who are yet to receive many at all. We pray that you would begin to bring healing to this world after this pandemic healing in the spirit to families who's, who've lost loved ones, healing to those who have been sick, who are still sick. Pray for our own country, Lord, that you would bring healing to the divisions which have existed for so long, that you would give us a common vision of the good, the common good. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need today, Lord, we pray and ask that you would bring healing to those who are sick. For those who are healing from an accident, for, for Scott Wagner, we pray for recovery. And for Jesse Muir, who continues to recover from a serious and devastating bout with COVID. For those who are fighting cancer, Jerry Lugadensky. For those recovering from different illnesses, managing chronic pain, for Helen Seafeld, Susie Nitsky. 
Lord, we pray for Dottie Ellenson today. That you would comfort her in a deep way that only that she would know that you are with her. Lord, in your mercy. For this church, Lord God, we thank you for the people here. For those who couldn't make it, we pray that you would bless each person today. That your face would shine upon them, Lord God, that they would know your love. That they would know your calling upon their lives. Lord, guide this church each and every day as we seek your will. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would you receive this blessing? May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Okay, you can remain standing for our closing hymn, which we don't know yet, but we will. Who would like to choose a congregational favorite? Janet, you get the hand up first award. 684 in the blue hymnal. Great. Good one.
so much, Janet. I love that song. Um, what a contribution to the service. So thank you. Have a great week, everybody. Uh, we'll see you back next week. Take care. And watch for announcements on, again, mask mandates, things like that. Hopefully we'll have those updated this week. Wow.